How you doing? So Martina, what have these uh, prisoners done that's so bad? Why are they why are they locked up? What sort of horrible crimes have they committed? Well, a lot of the animals are here really because of people's egos. Someone wanted to have an exotic for a pet because it made them different or it made them important or because they say, quote, I've always loved tigers or lions or leopards or whatever the case might be. A lot of the times it's through ignorance. Arisha came in from Pennsylvania. Um, a gentleman, a doctor, had always a desire to own a tiger. So when he retired, he decided to buy a tiger and he bought a tiger. But by the time this cub was somewhere between four and six months of age, the poor doctor spent most of his time on his tail on the kitchen floor. So being a man of reasonably good intelligence, he sort of figured, wait a minute, if at that age this cub knocks me over and makes me sit down on my butt on the floor, what's going to happen when he is two and three and five years old? There is less than 200 Siberian tigers left in the wild today and probably less than 2,000 Bengal tigers left in the world today. And I don't have the figures for Sumatran, but it's very, very small. We probably have more Siberian tigers in captivity than we have in the wild. What does that say about what's happening to the wild? Is there any wild left? Is there any wilderness left? The human population is yet still on its exploding orbit and we are exploding everywhere. You, we are usurping our forests for farmland huh. and we have very little if any wild left. What we have left, I guess it's sort of a wild tended garden because if it's still left that means someone has taken the time to make this a national reserve and managed it or is going to make it a national reserve and will manage it. But there is not going to be unmanaged wilderness left. Oh, and you heard my voice and I'm not talking to you. Oh my goodness, I should be shot. Hi, 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 hi. This little guy is beautiful, huh? This is Miss Arusha. Hmm. She is named for the great African city of Arusha. Really? Stand still while he takes a picture, okay? Is this a, it's an ocelot, a leopard? No, this is a leopard. Wow. And what's Hi, happening sweetheart. to all the little friend leopards back in Africa? Are there any I left? think, yes. A leopard is a remarkable creature. Be good, sweetie, thank you. She um, loves you, look at that. Oh yes, we're very <laughs> good friends. A leopard is quite an opportunist and if there's a prey base upon which the day could prey, they do make it very well. They can live in secrecy next to somebody's home and you'll never know that there's a leopard living near you. I mean, they're very, very secretive animals. They're very good at hiding themselves and they, they have a very little impact on where they live and so a lot of people don't even know that there's a leopard in a tree right on that hill. You want to see a gorgeous animal? Come here, I'll show you a gorgeous one. Careful of this area right here. You've got wonderful teeth. Hi, baby. Hi. Come on up. Oh, what a good boy. What a well, he's good not, boy. He's not so upset that he wants to get up, really. What a good boy. Smell from the nap position. What? A, this is a first, Jan. Hi. Virginia's yeah. A first. It's a good boy. It's a good boy. What do you mean it's, a first boy? it's the first time that he has allowed me this close really? and he has stopped snarling now. A good they boy. really sense they sense a lot, don't they? They know if, if you're afraid or if you love them or you think? Well 
there is certainly a a pheromone that will come out from people like just like there is from animals i don't think a lot has to do with the sound of your voice the manner that you put your quietness across um good boy he doesn't like jam <laughs> And what's this little guy's name? His name is Wizard. Wizard. And I think he's very appropriately named. Hi, Wizard. Do you name the animals or do they come already with names? A lot of them come with names. If they come, oh, we had an animal arrive this morning, for example, and her name, she's a tiger. And she came in from Mississippi and her name was Shamu. Well, every time I think of Shamu, I think of a black and white creature, you know, going through the waves. Right. So I had to change the name on the spot. So we named her Schmooze. And a Hollywood actress sponsored her immediately. And the tie up between schmoozing and schmooze and Hollywood and actors is all sort of perfect. Wolves. This is Dagger, huh? This is Dagger. Dagger's a little lion. It's a mountain lion. Mm. There's a lot of mountain lions here right now. Do have them as pets and then let them go? Is that happening? Well, this is a, a native animal, and a lot of people do have them as pets because it's a smaller cat. It's not that small, but people do have them as pets. Mm -hmm. But like with leopards or anything else, sometimes authorities step in and say, you have no permits, you have no licensing, you don't live in the right zone, the state has no permits to keep these kinds of animals, sometimes people change jobs, sometimes they get a divorce. Uh, quite often they will have a baby and all of a sudden they're worried that their, the child's safety is jeopardized. Um, sometimes when they get married, if the animal, if the husband had the animal, the wife sort of says, is it the animal or me? And he has to make a choice. And he says, the animal. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes <laughs> it has happened. There she is. This cat, she's getting old now and in years, and of course she's been here for most of her life. She came here when she was uh, oh, two, about two years old, 18 months, two years old. The people who had her, the very first thing they did was declaw her in the front feet. That didn't make her safe. Then they declawed her in the back feet. That didn't make her safe. Then they took out her canines, which are the big teeth. Mm -hmm. That didn't make her safe. Then they removed all of her teeth. At the end of, it, that, of that, that didn't make her safe either, so they brought her here. I'm surprised they didn't kill her. That would have made her safe. Well, yeah. My God, what a horrible thing to do. Take all the animal's defenses away. So the only place she could really live would be here. Indeed, she has no teeth. Her diet is especially prepared and we've got to, she can't even groom herself properly. She needs assistance in grooming because teeth do play a part in a certain amount of grooming. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful. Look at those eyes. She's talking to us. Sheena. Sheena. Hi there. Somebody will say to me, I live in Van Nuys. I don't care about mountain lions. Or... People actually say that. They don't care. Oh, absolutely. They'll say, I've never seen a mountain lion and I'm 57 years old. I haven't missed out on anything. They don't understand that it is the interior of self. Mm -hmm. And they are going to feel this down the line. I don't know. I think we're so busy living today and we want more and more and we don't have enough and 
someone said to me, the more money I make, the more debt I get into. And it's true, because the more you, they want more and more and more and more. Well, and we don't need that. Well, think about it. I mean, people get in the air-conditioned car, they drive in this closed environment at high speeds, across a landscape, which 99% of has probably been ruined, to go to an air-conditioned office, to talk on a phone, to look at electronic devices, to get back in the car, to come back, to go to an apartment complex that looks like everybody else's, to watch TV. So their experience... Don't forget the air conditioning. <laughs> I forgot the air conditioning. Oh, well. <laughs> A little silly me. But people don't really experience the nature anymore, they, unless they go to no. the zoo on Sunday. And, pay and that's not nature, that's experiencing animals, and that is good. Right. I, I'm glad that, I'm glad the zoos are there, because without the zoos, you see, again, people want to be entertained today. They've got to know something, they've got to, to appreciate it. Mm -hmm. If they have never, if they don't see something in the zoo, they can't say, oh, look, Charlie, how beautiful it is. And right. the next time an issue comes up about the it, they'll say, oh, well, it would be nice to have some of those around, they were pretty. <laughs> There is a wolf. That oh, might be. Is that an Arctic wolf? These are Arctics, yes. Mm. We fear what we don't understand, and it has taken us many, 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 many millennials of years before we finally understood what is a wolf. Today we understand wolves, and as a matter of fact, there are movements afoot now to introduce wolves to various parts of our country where they used to be native. And I guess that's what gives me hope in some areas. It gives me hope that maybe there's a chance. Maybe we're not as uncaring or selfish. Maybe there is a future. Ah, you want to talk about hybrids? Hybrids, yeah. What Let's look about hybrids. These are hybrids. These are part wolf, part dog. And again, you have the breeders who will say, oh, this is 15, 16, 14, 13, 50, 50, whatever the percentages. The bottom line is it is part wolf and part dog. And whenever you do that, you basically have a genetic crapshoot going for you. A lot of these animals find their way to the pet market some people erroneously get hybrid animals because they wanted a good watchdog. Well, they don't understand wolves. A domestic dog's position in life, he wants to basically be a friend to man, love, please obey. A wolf, on the other hand, is a very independent animal. It's a family-oriented animal. It, it is very bonded animal. It bonds to its group, its pack. Highly complex social structure. When you mix those two together, you have sometimes animals that are schizophrenic, sometimes they're fear biters, sometimes they are so shy that it takes them months to accept an, another individual who they've never seen before. Sometimes they are so stressful that their life is just not worthwhile living. People... So people do that out of selfishness then, right? Oh, well, they're for sale. Uh -huh. They're for sale. People who crossbreed species should at least follow the Hippocratic Oath. Which is? And the Hippocratic Oath is at least do no harm. The cage that I'm standing in front of is my favorite animal. Mm -mm. This one right here, the king of the jungle? That's my favorite. Five minutes ago, Sheena was my favorite. <laughs> Five minutes before that, Dagger was my favorite. <laughs> I love it. You can't, you can't really say that this is a favorite or that is a favorite. Mm -hmm. Every one of them... There's a certain amount of protectiveness. I feel protective mm -hmm. towards everything underneath my charge. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? Do you like flowers too? Oh, I love flowers. Look at this gorgeous flower. Oh, it's pretty. And this is a lilac that just accidentally got broken off, so I'm going to take it and put it into water. So all species are okay with you? Is Nande with you? Oh yeah, they sure are. <laughs> <laughs> Come on and see the new arrivals. Is this 
this uh, for real or is this an act when they smile? Oh, in her case, it's for real. Uh -huh. Is she a new arrival? No. She's just very persnickety about who she likes and who she doesn't. Leo, on the other hand, makes up in a good disposition for what she lacks. <laughs> so he's the calm one amongst the two. Yes, he's the philosopher. He looks like a philosopher. And she's a snot. Huh. Kings of the jungle. Whoever said that African lions were king of the jungles mm -hmm. did not understand lions. Really? Lions are, they're lazy bums. They sleep a lot. They sleep a lot and they don't do a lot of stuff. I would have never called a lion a king of the jungle. <laughs> look at how gorgeous they look. I mean, they are just like silk. I mean, they're just like silk. So graceful. Perfect weight. Huh. I love it when, when you've got something just so perfect, it just, it glistens. And they are just perfection. The weight is just exquisite and look at the muscles. There's enough muscle tone and you could just see. Love it. Boobers, what is with the good boy? I brought you flowers to smell. What do you think, huh? This is our working lion. This is like the leopard I showed you. This lion can be taken out and he can be presented. And he does a pretty fair job of representing his species. Only one thing wrong with him. You know the cartoon character Linus in the, in the comic strip? Yeah. He's always sort of dusty and dirty and his well, face is smudged and there's flies always flies over, over his head. This is Linus. <laughs> of the lion world. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Bad hygiene, huh? <laughs> it's just, he doesn't care. He doesn't fix his hair and he doesn't groom himself. And if- Is he a 60s lion? Maybe so, but he's not that old. He's only 11 years old. How long do lions live? I've had them live 25, 26 years oh. with good care. Wow. Sure. That's pretty phenomenal. Yes, indeed. This is the health center. And this is a very healthy veterinarian. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, thank you. Nice to meet you. You're helping out these little critters in here, huh? Right. That's commendable. He won't make it, will he? No, I get uh, yeah. the issue. The eyeball is broken. Has infection and in has the brain. nervous system. Oh, this little guy's not going to make it, huh? No, this guy is not going to make it. Uh, has an infection that went into the brain. Uh, you got a little bird patient. We try not to make a lot of noise around there. Come on in. Okay, let's see. They're hungry. <laughs> Perfect possum wounds. The nifty thing about this, Mama Possum's pouch is very, very humid. It is hard to create that same humidity without sophisticated equipment. With this kind of sophisticated equipment, we can duplicate or come as close to Mama Possum's pouch. What happened to Mama? Mama was either killed by dogs, run That's over by a car, um, generally one of those two things. Yeah. We have dozens and dozens and dozens of possums. It's very hard for me to tell you which case history is attached to this particular group of possums. There might be 75 baby possums here at a time.
Look at the bird learning how to eat a worm. Check the bird learning how to eat a worm. We're putting ourselves in a kind of a cage, aren't we? By getting, by d not paying attention to saving wildness and wilderness and that sort of thing. Absolutely. People, people think that they, that we're losing habitat. And yes, we are. But we're also losing habitat for us, not just for the animals. Because after we, we use up, there is nothing else left to use. Mm -hmm. Once it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. And having no habitat for, for other creatures of the same planet is only step number one to getting us out of house and home also. I think we are entering a period of time where we need to share the planet with everything that is on it. We, we can't just keep taking and it belongs to us and our needs must be satisfied first. We need to share this planet with everything that lives on this planet. Because if we don't, we're going to become the prisoners, aren't we? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. On death row, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Martine. You're welcome. Thank you very much. It's very enjoyable.